Welcome back to the Summer Split, where Misfits Gaming have a 1-0 lead in this matchup against the Unicorns of Love. And Unicorns of Love have to be hurting after that last game, because even when they got to the mid-game, even when it was somewhat even, and we expected them to take off with their infamous team fighting strength, Misfits honestly just outplayed across the map. Exactly, yeah. Again, as we highlighted multiple times, the amount of engage on the side of Misfits literally just caught Unicorns of Love probably 10 times in that mid-game. Like, it went from being Unicorns of Love two 3k gold ahead in terms of towers, they were like looking good, and then suddenly it was like seven, eight kills for misfits, and, and they just kept finding more, and it was the same engage it, every time. And it feels like Unicorns of Love just tried too many times to double down on a small advantage, leading them to, to kind of overextend, and the misfits say, hey, we have a Kled and yeah. a Gragas. Like, exactly. you cannot step that far forward, we will catch you. That's what I mean, I, I really think Unicorns of Love just kind of disrespected how fast Misfits could engage, which is what we saw from some of the teams, you know, against the North American guys as well. Not saying all the teams, but some of them at least, Unicorns being one of them. Anyway, game two, Misfits once again on that blue side. They first pick Thresh. No reason to really change that. Uh, Elise already being banned away by Unicorns. Exactly the same setup. And we will probably just see the Thresh first pick from Misfits once again. Why wouldn't they just be happy to rinse and repeat? It was a game plan that worked out for them. Even without aggression in the early game, as we predicted, it still went so well. And if Unicorns of Love just go for the double lock in here. We may be yes, looking for the run back, like. but the Gragas mix up. So 1-1 one, one, or? 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one, one. One, we get we'll that. So <laughs> this is actually what I want to see last game from them, because you don't have to take Rakan here due to the support already being shown on the other side. You can just take Rakan now where Exile is sitting in his spot, and then you still get your Rezaya Rakan combo. And the reason I want the Gragas here for Xerxe is one, it denies a main engage tool from Misfits, and two, I think it's a jungle where Xerxe has shown that he has scaling, but he still gets some early game pressure because Gragas can gank early on. He just doesn't really want to skirmish, but he can definitely go for good ganks with Body Slam, with his ulti. So I think it gives the best of both worlds for Xerxe, a bit of early game, and of course, great late game. Now Misfits trying to figure out what they counter that with. How they want to deal with the Gragas in the jungle. What is the option going to be? Oh, okay. I, Graves comes in. Now, Deficio, I'm a little skeptical because I think in the past, when we've seen Misfits be at their strongest, it has been Maxlore on a playmaking champion like the Gragas, like the Lee Sin. Graves feels a little bit off the wall. Yeah, also no engage options from Graves at all, and that kind of backs up your point here. Misfits, when they don't run easy engage comps, they kind of wander around in the mid game, not really knowing what to do. And they rely on like setting up a perfect dragon or baron play, which is very hard to do, or at least from some of the teams you see here in Europe. And then suddenly they kind of don't do a whole lot. It is obviously picked because Gragas will not pressure the Graves early game. So you get a lot of scaling that you can try and then match the team fight. Enemy team gets a tank, you get a carry. That's what they're trying to trade here on the side of Misfits. I'm surprised though, I'm not the biggest fan of Graves right now. But I want to see it first here from Maxlaw before I really want to judge it. To see what it is going to be. Mid lane ban still the priority for both sides. Cassio, LeBlanc, maybe a Cinder to follow. Interestingly enough, Cassidy has been banned out. And I'm Fischio, looking at Corky. I'm looking at Corky. I think it's telegraphing it. We're seeing a lot of the counters taken away. Of course, Cassidy just kind of disgusting into Corky. So taking it off the table may hint at what Unicorns of Love have next. Uh, because last time they last picked the Galio mid, which I, th I think the plan around it was fine, but the execution uh, didn't really work for Exile. I, I think just going for that Corky is a safe choice. And then last pick, top, so you keep that Gragas flex as long as possible. Renekton also banned away, maybe looking to open something up on the side of Misfits, but the Corky has been locked in. Now we know that Power Beeble plays Lucian, which is a good matchup against the Corky, and then you can go Rumble top for Alfari, but it's a comp that's very hard to play, and it's a comp that Misfits couldn't really execute against uh, H2K, despite getting that 7, 8K gold lead. So I, I'm actually happy they're not going towards that route again, even though the picks would make a lot of sense in this specific situation. And the Syndra coming in is something we talked about when we looked at the Misfits match history. Has not always been a priority pick for the team, but one thing that Syndra does offer outside of Ridiculous Burst Damage is that reliable or semi-reliable engage with the Force of Will the into the Scatter That's the That's engage right there. Yeah. So, we may have lost it in the jungle, but we have more than made up for it elsewhere. Jarvan Ooh, on the top yes, side of the map. Yes. Visit Shachi pulling out the Fiora as well. Top lane is going to be heavily contested this time, and much different in terms of the compositions these teams have put together. I really like the pick here from Visichachi. You're not afraid of the Graves' early ganks. 
you are playing against a Jarvan where, yes, in the early game, sure, Jarvan can be annoying, but once you actually get a bit of scaling under your belt, then Fiora will just take over that side lane. And of course, it's always a pleasure watching Mr. Chachi on some of these split push and carries. Unicorns of Love this time around, I like the changes they made. Uh, they have probably the best champion of right now for Exile in the mid lane, safe, good scaling as well. Same bot lane as before, and this time around, you got some engage on Zergze. You removed some engage on the side of Misfits, also important to highlight. And therefore, you might have a much easier time actually now trying to apply the split push. And now, what has changed for the side of Misfits when we look at the way this composition has unfolded? With the Graves in the jungle, do we expect them to make any kind of early game aggressive plays? Are they under pressure to do so? Because I feel like on the opposite side, when you look at a Fiora, you're always, to a certain degree, playing against a clock. That is definitely one thing you always have to consider, unless the Fiora gets dragged into a team fight and then she's not that valuable in the late game, but that's a bit like a Jax situation. Same with Graves. I look at Graves and Karsix somewhat in the same way, where your early ganks can be powerful if you have CC in the lane to set it up, but you don't have to gank. You can just farm. You have actually pretty good scaling uh, on your side. If you're Misfits, though, and you play against Unicorns of Love, you typically want to look for some of those early plays, especially around top side. The fans are out in force. It's going to be game two, Misfits versus Unicorns of Love. Will we see the same aggressive level one? Let's find out. Same sides, different lineups, blue side versus red. Misfits moving out. It looks like they may stay grouped this time around, ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Unicorns. You don't think uh, Alfari is uh, going to get caught again? Has to flash instantly. He probably knows this time around. Uh, let's see, though. The Javan from afar here should also be a very good pickup for him just for the stylistic uh, bonus points here for Misfits, where bringing such a, a good champion for starting fights will help them. And then you have follow-up. You mentioned the long-range stun from Sintra. Yes, it's not 100% reliable as an engage, but if you have a guy in front of you knocking someone up first, follow-up <laughs> is going to land. Same with Viral Salty, same with Thresh Hook. Like, all these half engage options from these different champions in Varus, Thresh, and Syndra, it gets very easy to land them when you have a Javan engaging for you. Using that cataclysm. Now, still, of course, we call them half engage options simply because it is not a point and click. It's not guaranteed, it's not a guaranteed every yeah. single time. It's a right? skill shot that can get dodged, jumped away from whatever it is, and then suddenly, if that is your only tool, well, enemy team might just disengage and you didn't get your fight, but Javan is there to guarantee the engage from Misfits. Max Law will not be the man we're looking at in that case. Seems to be a chill start where the only difference is the fact that Samax is pulling right now for his jungler. Xerxes getting off to a quick start here with the blue buff. Graves can invade early game. So one thing Xerxes can do is secure blue and then rush over and try and get his red buff as fast as possible to make sure that Maxlaw can't really invade him on his buffs and try and uh, be a bit annoying in the early game. But Xerxes seems to be doing blue buff into Grump. So just doing a full thing. Oh, never mind. He said, never mind. Playing with your heart. Playing with your heart, fish. You. I now said, never mind. He said, never mind. It's cool. <laughs> now, Xerxes was sort of a weak point in the last game. We did see him not really have the same He's impact. Doing it. Thank you, Xerxes. I was like, damn, am I completely wrong here? Is he just going to do like a super slow clear? But no, he is in fact going for that red buff. Point was correct. That's all that matters. <laughs> Thank you for interrupting. We get, you sorry, were right. sorry. You were right. Game one, we saw the Kindred. And the big important thing here is look at that jungle proximity 27.9. Weeks one to five, 41.2. I think with a Gragas in his hand, yes, he may not offer the same damage that the Kindred could potentially, but we can expect him to be a lot more present in the early laning phase. Yeah, and I actually think in the early game, Gragas might offer the same, if not even slightly more, in terms of just like a quick burst engage from him with red buff especially like it's it's always dangerous you got to respect that body slam into w hit into a q obviously kindred didn't really do anything in the early game that's not what she's picked for uh, sadly the rest of unicorns fell too far behind let's see max law look guys he's going for that red buff invade but zexy all right he, three one he's not there you. you're winning fine he's not there <laughs> He might just say, you know what, I'm going to go gank. And we have to praise Xerxes for the creative pathing here. Does give him an option. Now Exile a bit caught out here. Keep your eyes on Max Lord. Don't think he's going to flash for this one, but is zoning Exile out of the lane for a decent amount of time? How many creeps has he lost is the really impactful question here. Uh, that really does suck for Exile here. Luckily, no flash used. Max Lord could not go aggressive. Didn't know where Xerxes would be. Xerxes, though, he's just bot side. He's just farming. You know, he didn't get denied anything. He's doing just fine on his Gragas here. Maxlaw is now looking towards the top side, but you can't really dive Fiora this early. 
See what they want to go for. Hansama has been locked up this time around, taking so much damage. Flayed backwards, now trying to flash out to safety. Hillisang's looking to chase down the kill. Heal has been popped. Where's the gleaming kill? The flash forward. That little bit of auto range. That's going to be one kill coming in for the Unicorns. Zerx is on his way down as well. Ignar with flash. Root has come through. That's going to be another kill going over. Samix firing back. Unicorns love cleaning up that early game. All started with that 2v2. We have the same bot lanes as last game. And remember what happened there. Level 1, we had fights. Level 2, we had fights. We get the same thing now in the bottom lane, just in favor of the Unicorns of Love, Hillisang and Samax. One kill, one assist each. Couldn't have shared it any better, which is actually a good thing for support as well to get early kills for that quick sidestone and Moby Boots rushing. Oh, the Moby Boots for Hillisang. Get ready for some roams. We'll watch it one more time, but this fight goes a little bit differently when Hillisang doesn't have to burn Flash and Samix doesn't have to burn Heal at level two. Yeah, just impossible for Ignat to do anything to help here. Power of Evil and Exile. Could be in trouble, Power of Evil. Going forward, over the wall, Power of Evil. Doesn't look like he's going to flash for it, but Xerxe is here, power hungry for the kill. Oh! He's gonna get him in the end. Misfits fire back with the kill of their own. Oh, no. No, that's never supposed to happen. But it did. It did, he could just walk away multiple times. And here's the thing, as good as Balin looks right now, Hansama 10 CS up. Of course, some of that's going to get back from Samus. We'll look at the mid lane, 39 to 23. There, there's, there's a bit of a curse here for the Unicorns of Love because I often feel like when they get early kills in the side lanes, Exile ends up dying in the mid lane at the same time. Now, Samex, he's alone. Play back. Oh, oh, nice flash. Down, no Good flash. Six. Guys get the root down. There's the lantern. Ignar playing savior. Hansama there to back the team up. Chachi cancel his teleport as well. Ignar will have to go back to base together with Max Lock. Good flash here from Samax, making big plays. So Exile, he's trading in the minion wave with the cannon hitting him as well. Power of Evil wins this one. Now if you're Exile, like, just try and walk out. But he actually, he feels safe because Xerxes is there and he can't really walk down towards the river due to Ignar showing up. And he just suddenly felt like he couldn't really go anywhere. Oh. And it all started with a trade he never had to take in the first place. It's hard to watch, but now Power of Evil could be the one who's in trouble. Does have the flash available. Not even going to pop it, unfortunately. Not making an impact there in the mid lane. We also got to talk about Power of Evil very quickly right here. Playing it very cool. This gank here didn't just panic flash or anything. The last trade, same thing. He had cleanse ready for the exhaust from Exile. He lands every single skill shot, and he knows he can chase the kill. So just great play from Power of Evil to get that big advantage. And that's always the key thing in League of Legends. When one player makes a mistake and dies, well, most of the time it's because the other player on the other side made a great play and punished. Absolutely, and now it gets harder for the Corky. No exhaust, level six Power of the Evil with a lost chapter and endurance ring. That could be disaster. Exile gonna have to play safer than he may have ever played before if he wants to survive this laning phase. And Misfits well aware of that fact. They're gonna put their sights on that dragon. Yeah, I had this discussion with Pacer Time who was trying to learn to play Corky in, in solo queue. Like, Corky as a champion, you might think you're strong in the early game and you should go bully the other guy. You don't have to. You are a scaling monster. Every item is fantastic for you in terms of quick power spikes. So when you play Corky in solo queue specifically, just farm in the early game. Your Q is very hard to land because it's that slow little balloon flying at them. So most of the time when you go to try and trade with Q, you miss yours and they just trade back with whatever skill shot they have and you just take them a lot of damage for no reason. Just farm in the early game, get your Trinity Force and only really play aggressive when you get your package. Because then you can ping bot lane, ping top lane, try and make a big play. Before that, you don't need to do anything. Exile tried, he died because of it. So now everyone in solo Q can see what you're not supposed to do. Fortunate state of affairs there, but Hillisang continuing to play aggressive on the bottom side. And we look back mid, and you can see things are getting worse and worse. Had that scatter of the week connected, Power People may have just gone for the ultimate. Exhaust is up for Exile, which does mean it's pretty hard to kill him under that tower. But moments ago, it was, you know, who's going to win in the trades? Now it's, can Exile survive in the mid lane? And that is not at all where the Unicorns want to be. And this uh, now... Puts us in this situation where it's always Power of Evil roaming first because Exile, he's stuck under his tower. He can't leave his lane, which means suddenly Maxlor gets free access to the river, to the enemy jungle, on this graves here. He doesn't really have to be afraid of any fight because he knows his mid laner will show up first. Power of Evil right there, you see his uh, Orianna from last game. 11-0-4 didn't die for the first time in, what do you say, 30-something games? 39 games. 39 yeah. games. Not great performance from him, but set up very well by his team and all the engage. Definitely, and it feels like this time around, Exile giving him a small advantage in the early game could just be the advantage that he needs to have a similar performance to game one. 
Finally getting his hands on that blue buff. Will just continue to pressure Quirky in. And Unicorns of Love, I don't think they're going to find an advantage in this mid lane. They're going to have to find it somewhere else. And bot lane, going pretty well for them so far. Whereas Vizichachi is happy in the top side of the map. We've talked about this. The later it goes, the more comfortable Fiora is on that side lane. Approaching that first item. Yeah, it's going to be one of those games where they will rely on Samax and Chachi as the big carries, at least for now. Obviously, late game XL can definitely join in on this Corky here, just slightly delayed. We get a pause. It seems to be Power of Evil after he landed that stun onto the Corky. Must have been something wrong for him. I'm trying to explain that. Misfits, pause. We will update you on context as uh, Deficio is just spitballing right now. <laughs> He did make the icon, though. He's like, hey, look, I, th I threw the ball, and then... I think there was just two fingers raised there as well, so something about hitting a skill shot. All right. Well, we'll update you on that as we go along. In the meantime, this is kind of the thing that we wanted to see more of from the Misfits in terms of having a very strong early game. Unfortunately for Misfits right now, it's only happening in the mid lane. And the mid lane was a noted point of weakness for the Unicorns in the past. So if anything is going to suffer, I feel like Unicorns of Love are fine sacrificing Exile, at least to a small degree, because they have a bot lane that is doing well. They have a top laner who is going to continue to scale. And you said, Corky, he is that scaling pick the later we go. Yeah, the only problem is uh, when you are in the situation where your, your mid laner is dying is it just means that your side lane, so Chachi and the bottom lane, they just can't make any mistakes. Because if they suddenly make a mistake and also die, you have two losing lanes. And that's really hard then to play against. So right now, all the pressure is actually on Samax, Hillisang, and Visichachi to play almost a perfect early game. They cannot afford to make a mistake like the one Exile made, so that Misfits just get a big advantage. But obviously, important to highlight as well that Maxlaw is not on that ganking beast, uh, like cr crazy ganking jungler. He is still farming on this Gravesy. He's actually allowing Visichachi to sit and free farm in the top lane, and that can be big for Unicorns. And it does make it difficult to shut down the bottom side of the map or the top side of the map. Just an update, folks. Power Evil has reported a bug. League officials are investigating. I will give you more context as it gets to me. However, in the meantime, as they investigate the bug, you're going to be uh, joined by the sultry sounds of Deficio as he sings his favorite song for us. No. <laughs> I got one chip. I, 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 I will not <laughs> sing my favorite song. <sighs> I don't even know what my favorite song is right now. We have been listening to a lot of pop music, I feel like, so it's, it's, yeah, yeah. it's probably something that people would disapprove of if they no, had... No, 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 no. It would definitely be like, you know, a proper rock and roll song. Oh, proper rock. Like the ones we listen to today. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dire Straits, Money for Nothing, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> we built this city? No, not, not <laughs> we built this city. That was uh, eclectic music for sure. Yeah, 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 this guy gets it. Imagine Dragons with Warriors. There you go. That's the favorite song. Definitely favorite that world song. That actually is a great, that's yeah, a that is fantastic. the best world song we have definitely made. That was, was well-timed. Good job, Riot Games. I wasn't around back then, but man, that was hype. Back in the glory days. Now, if we could play it right now, not saying that we will, but if we could, during a pause, I would find that very funny. <laughs> epic, we, is, epic, that, is that what we need doing pauses? Like <laughs> just epic, epic music? music. I think we should get a... tension builds, folks. Get like a live performance from Imagine Dragons when we have a pause. They're just sitting ready backstage <laughs> waiting for this. We're going to need to give them like 30 years and like six bad albums, I think, <laughs> before they're going to be like, yeah, well, we'll be your backstage ready to go band. <laughs> That's what we need in the ULCS, though, man. I don't <laughs> see any LCS having that. And then suddenly, you know, 1-0. There we go. There That's go. how I find the edge. That, we ever, that we ever, is, if we ever go way. play in NA and lose, we're like, guys, we didn't have a live band. I don't know what you can <laughs> expect from us. <laughs> Let's see uh, this game there. We see, uh, of course, the coaching staff from Misfits sitting ready backstage. Uh, very happy with the first game. Good pick and ban phase. The players obviously can't really do a whole lot in this situation other than wait uh, for officials to look at that play from Power Vivo and the reported buck. And it's a tough spot to be. You can't talk to your team. You have to stay focused. We've, we've, I've talked to Reckless in the past about this. And he says it can be very, very frustrating because you're sitting there. You know what you want to do. And you can't think about anything other than that. You can't lose that thought. What are those flash timers? You have to remember. Time is not actually passing, but you need to remember there's three minutes left on that flash. You need to remember that this is the next play available for us. Yeah, and also at the same time, obviously, the, the Misfits guys, they can't really see this, but we actually see uh, Unicorns of Love. They're, they're invading for the bottom side. Uh, they have... Corky and Gragas on the way down to try and kill Hansama and Ignor. So right now, you are sitting in that situation where as soon as the game gets unpaused, Hansama and Ignor need to be ready for a lot of action to happen instantly. And if you're just unfocused for a few seconds getting right back into it, it might mean you just die straight away. 
a situation where you're just mashing the buttons, waiting for it to happen. Well, league officials are investigating the bug reported by Power of Evil. In the meantime, we're going to go over to the analyst desk for a look at the early game as we sort out what is happening. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I hope we can get into game again really soon. So let's have a little catch up of what happened so far. Maybe your kind of views on the picks and the bans. Interesting top lane matchups coming in. Jarvan versus Fiora. How is that going to evolve? There isn't big of a difference now. There, uh, well, 10 CS up for the size of Vizichachi, which is to be expected, I would say. It's not a huge... Uh, no, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm just making that up. I actually don't know what should he be at this point. Um, <laughs> it should go for Jarvan early game yeah. because that's the hardest part of this matchup for Fira. If she manages to get through early game, then she has clear cells to just take over the game. So the fact that he's 10 CS ahead just makes it even better for Fira because it only gets easier from this point. That's exactly what I meant, Oluwamni, but thank you for uh, backing me up there. If we look at the rest of the picks and men's, I was quite surprised that a Graves coming out just because it's something that we have seen fallen down in priority by, well, a lot recently. Some junglers were banned out, though, so how do you think this sculpted their composition around this in the end for Misfits? Uh, I think that they wanted just some kind of scaling jungler to match that of Gragas. Um, I'm surprised he didn't go for some kind of other Cinderhold jungle like the Sejuani we've been seeing, but that just indicates that he hasn't been practicing it and that they weren't that interested in getting an early game jungler like a Lee Sin or even a Kha'Zix that does have that scaling element. So he wanted something that can match the scaling of Gargas, can trade fairly well with it early on and has the ability to counter gank. Uh, so far in the early game, he hasn't been able to do that mm -hmm. because the early deficit the bottom lane suffered from. But I think that from a composition wise, it'll still offer a fair amount of damage in the mid game and it still synergizes fairly nicely with the team fight they've been able to build uh, themselves. Yeah, we aren't there yet in the mid game uh, for this game, but as you said, there were some advantages. Unicorns of Love decided to go to the bottom lane, which is a better start for Xerxes. He's able to play on the Gragas. He's able to get a couple of kills, which should propel them. So do you think that the advantage they're building up in the bottom lane will spill over to the rest of the game, or are we still waiting to see uh, what will happen? Well, the fact that he's already gone for very early Moby Boots suggests that the Rakan is looking to try and spread that. He tried to go for a gank in mid lane too, so yep. I think that it is proactive play that we're seeing from the side of the Unicorns of love, but Misfits are responding well. The fact that they went immediately to the bottom lane to try and set up a dive, even though they don't get any kills, they're trying to pressure Unicorns of Love early to prevent them from trying to snowball this early lead, like getting the flash out of the Zyre, burning the teleport as well. You're looking at a lot of great plays and big summoner spells being used that just slow down Unicorns of Love and make their game a little... Uh, Harder. Yeah, and I said the Bobby boots for uh, Hilasang on Rakan. Oduamne, you were saying so annoying. Supports are actually the most annoying players in the game because they can always show up in your lane, and Hilasang is great at that. Yeah, I, I don't know. When you play against supports, and you, there, there's always those supports that they see you running and wanting to get the base, and then they start chasing you. And even though they will have to base as well, because they can tank tower shots and everything, but if they stop your base, then they did their job. I, the more annoying you are as a support, the better a support you are. So how uh, annoying are you generally in game video? I'm just generally annoying. All right. That's just a feature of me. <laughs> I don't agree. I think you're wonderful. Who was annoying, though, for uh, Exile, at least, was Power of Evil in the mid lane. We're going to take a look at another kill while the kill where Syndra managed to get the upper hand over Corky, which obviously was a bit of a misplay and a bit of a, a good play. But unfortunately for Exile, I feel like this is one of those things with struggles he's been having that might tilt him in the game. So I do hope that that's not the case. The thing is, I think the fact that he tried to trade into Power of Evil when there was a massive minion wave against him was the first falter, mm -hmm. but something that Odo Amne highlighted, uh, which I thought was really impressive from Power of Evil, was the fact that he used his cleanse just as the Q lands, right? So it doesn't matter if he's trying to cleanse the exalt, like all he cares about is guaranteeing that Q damage hitting the Corky, because he knows that's all he needs to get the kill, which is why he effectively cleanses nothing, but you see that he was thinking things through and he was calculating the amount of damage output that he needed to secure that kill. So mad props to uh, Power of Evil for recognizing that. Mad props to him. Indeed, we are still waiting to get back into game. We should be into game shortly. About two minutes is what I heard just a second ago. So we can think about what can happen in this game. We had a tweet from Yanko saying Unicorns of Love will certainly win this game with this draft. Quote me on this, which we are in this case. I know you want to run that later in case they lost and laugh at him, but I'm sorry. <laughs> we had a break, so we had to bring it up. But honestly, if we do look at these two comps, knowing that it is even right now, if you look at scaling, if you look at team fighting, who has the upper hand, Oduwamne? Um, I, I feel like the mid game from Misfits is better, even though you have kind of Graves that he doesn't really do anything spectacular, all he brings is kind of damage, but you do have Syndra Jarvan as your mid game, and uh, they had some support, I forgot what it was, but it doesn't fresh, really matter. Fresh. Oh yeah, so uh, your mid game is really good because you can you have a lot of flame making from those champions. Your damage is pretty big, Jarvan's mid game damage is pretty big, but I think if 
Misfits doesn't make a lot of plays in the mid game, and Fiora becomes this huge silent threat. It's gonna be really hard. Uh, couple that with Corky with his really good scaling. If he manages to get through the mid game with all this damage coming from Misfits and all this engaged, then I think he all has this game. Well, also traditionally thinking of uh, people that can tilt it for the Unicorns of Love. This is Chachi is someone that even if the Unicorns of Love are down in gold earlier in the game, he's always up and he's always has the ability to turn that around. And when he has the Fiora in his hands and he is already up on his counterpart, that should spell bad news for the Misfits. Yeah, Vizichachi is always a player that you have to watch out for. Uh, but I do have to give credit to Alfari and how well he has been playing so far mm -hmm. from what we've seen of this series too. And what I just want to see from Misfits is proactivity. So far in the early game, they've been pretty active on the map, but they need to continue that up, get that Java moving around the map, take advantage of the level spike spikes that he has and pair it up with the Syndra as Oda was saying. We are ready to get back into game. Great analysis on nine minutes of gameplay. Nailed it, guys. And we're going to get back into game and see more of that gameplay. So, Casters, take it back. Thank you very much, Shox. Just as an update on the bug, it was a visual bug for Power of Evil relating to Corky and his Phosphorus Bomb. It was intermittent, so League officials have restarted his computer, and we should be getting back into game. And everything will hopefully be honky-dory, which is an expression that no one other than my grandmother used growing up. So hopefully some of your <laughs> elderly viewers know what I'm talking about. I don't know. I don't I know thought what that I was. thought it was my English that was terrible. <laughs> I've been like, oh, I must have completely missed that word. Yeah, definitely not a phrase that you need to learn. No, are you sure? Although I really wish... Sound really when good. When you were though. learning English, I will use it next week. <laughs> I promise you. And someone had just taught you all these old phrases, and you would just speak a weird, I know. different version. Of I had a fan tell me yesterday I should say "roll, uh, roll me flue" here or on the cast, and now I just did, which is a Danish phrase where it's like a tongue twister in Denmark, and all the Danes at home can try and say it five times. Almost impossible. It's a tongue twister in English too, from what I've heard. But. Now we're gonna look at the game. Remember, as a status update, Power People is dominating the mid lane. We are now seeing. Not a, a little bit of a lane swap coming up. Misfits moving to the top side. When we were talking earlier, pressure on Visit Chachi, yes. Samix, and Hillisank to find a lead for the team. Nice parry coming in for Visit Chachi. That's the thing. Before the pause, we mentioned how right now, Maxwell is kind of allowing Visit Chachi to free farm, and that's not a good thing to go oh, for, though. Moving forward. They know that the Rapaz is down. Oh. Alfari. He's hungry for it. Where's the dragon strike? Not gonna go for it. Nice escape from Vizichachi in the end. Meanwhile, uh, bot lane, Unicorns, they're still pushing. They have no reason to back away at the moment. Yeah, Wait, Ignar, oh, what is he doing? Dun, dun. Yeah, that's an ignite. Oh, the healing coming in, Vizichachi! Oh! oh my god, outplayed! Outplayed! Whoa! Don't try that at home! Oh, Ignar, man, he thought he had the easy kill with his summoner spells as well, but visit Chachi. Completely oh. outplayed. That was like <laughs> such a huge play for Mr. Chachi. That's a tilter. That's a tilter, folks. Respect to Ignar for going for it, but you you just you flay and you ignite and you walk away and you pray he can't. Uh. It's a learning moment. We don't, don't look back. Just don't walk away. Back. Just walk away. <laughs> Leave the gasoline, man. You don't need it. I hope it's enough. Oh, this uh, this uh, Rift Hell study is actually kind of risky because we have a lot of uh, Misfits guys around, but they don't have a ward specifically at the Rift Hell itself. And Xerxes jumped over the wall with Body Slam. Now Ignite is checking. He finds the Rakan. Should <laughs> they actually manage to sneak this, even though Maxlaw was at the Grump, Varus had fine push early on in the top lane, and Cinder was pushing mid lane, and they still managed to sneak it. And now they're moving forward, the Recombo goes in, now they're trying to lock down Han Sama. Uh, Double daggers, but... Very uncoordinated right there. Uh, clearly, Samix was not ready for that one to happen. Xerxes so going over the wall, hitting Ignar. Blast Cone, knock them their separate ways. Ignar not gonna die again. And as exciting as those few little plays were, I think... Really good look from Unicorns of Love. I feel like Misfits, the second Ignar went down, pulled their foot off the gas, playing a little too cautious. Now Power of Evil may be looking to find Xerxes. Can flash over. We'll have to. Oh, Cask. Buying a bit of time. Is just going to flash over in the end. Yeah, so that was, that was like the, la or the first 10 seconds back after the pause. We had a few big plays happening right there. Chachi gets a kill. Very important for him in terms of scaling. So oh, Ignar God. sees it. Flash. Ignite gets a hit down. And now with Chachi. Oh, the hook. I mean, he's just getting... He doesn't even beat him. Look at that. Chachi is so respectful. I would have spammed laugh so hard. He just backs. It's all business. It's all business for Visit Chachi. This is every game for him. <laughs> Everyone tries to camp Visit Chachi and kill Visit Chachi. Just another day at the office. Now it's looking good. 1-0 up on the Fiora. About even in the farm with Jarvan. Gave up a little bit of that lead as top lane was pressured out. But the bottom lane doing pretty well for Unicorns of Love. The top lane definitely stepping up. And Exile 
get a bit of time to freeform. And also that Rift held now over to Unicorns of Love. Another thing we want to track uh, after Rift Rivals for the Unicorns is the early game warding. You know, how much control do they actually get on the map? Control ward specifically is something we need to look at. We already see one from Samex right there. The AD carry who bought the least during Rift Rivals, but he's been a good boy and picked one up this time around. And now they need to set up their vision because they lost all of it after they got the Rift held and, and backed away. Meanwhile, though, uh, Samex is getting caught out. Another storm comes out. Power people's waiting for it before he pushes the ult. Does throw it out. Heal will save the day. Smart use of the heal from Samex uses it before the Grievous Wounds are proc from the Royal Anomicon. Also important to highlight that right now Xerxes is sitting with the Rift held, ready. Can't really use it because Samex is forced back. Power of Evil controlling the mid lane again. Side steps from Vizichachi. Nice parry. Is going to get aggressive moving forward. Vizichachi locked in the pit. I don't think he's going to get a chance to get out of this one. A little bit too cocky there from Vizichachi. Nice plays from that Misfits. Yeah, let's remember that Samex just went back to base and Exile was just coming from top lane. That fight was kind of random from the Unicorns of Love and they didn't actually have that vision control we just mentioned to see how many guys are around this mid lane. Had Igna not been there, great, would have been a good fight, but he just walked off the river oh, and they got it. Oh, Hillisang play backwards. Bye-bye. Rakan just disappears instantly, Misfits. May have to get up the Ocean Drake though in exchange, but... Nah, they, they're the staying, they're staying. Keep your eyes on Cersei, the Gragas. Is he gonna try to go for the steal? Decent creep wave building against the Unicorn to Love in mid lane. Now the move forward from Alfari in the back off. That is just the Ocean Drake secured. Well, we see a few picks now, a few kills for Misfits. One for Alfari. Important to highlight Power Viva as well. Of course, got in that first spot earlier. Is that looking very strategic? What's the first spot? He got a, he got a kill mid lane. It wasn't first blood. He got a kill. We got the kills, but that's right. fine. It's fine. He got a third blood. Third that's, blood. I'm trying to say third blood here, but <laughs> I'm, I'm not a native yeah. speaker. You a know, norm, normal uh, League of Legends concept. Third blood. Yeah, the not third quite blood. as important as first blood. No, no. But who, who gets comes seventh up all blood? The time. Yeah. <laughs> Waiting for seventh blood now. Xerxes, of course, is going to run out of time on that rift. Herald, unicorns of love. We'll have to find a pushed lane to utilize it. Come on, Exile. Kill it a little faster. Friends trying to back. Well, Vizichachi is still the, the guy we're looking at for Unicorns of Love. He's still ahead, slightly ahead in CS. He got that first kill. He will outscale the Javan, and he will win the side lane split push. But obviously, Javan will look to join team fights with, his, uh, with the rest of his team here. Xerxes gets the refill down in mid. It's a good position because the power viewer was not there to kill the wave early. He's trying now to get rid of it, but we at least strong. get a big charge. Scatter of the week can be used on the Rift here. Hillsang trying to run to safety. Nope, that's the deletion. And now the fight is starting up. Oh, Exile hooked up out of nowhere. Double kill for power of evil misfits. They don't care about the Rift here. They're killing champions. Yeah, and again, we have to, of course, praise power of evil and ignore for setting up these kills here. But unicorns of love, what are you doing? Like, they're just walking straight down, completely disrespecting misfits. Two games in a row now. And they get caught, they die. Like. Why do you need as a support to go in and hit a tower? You don't have to. You are not needed when it comes to killing turrets. And no. yet Hillisang finds himself overextended and he dies. Just a free kill for Power of Evil. And we look at the weak points right now in the game. Exile struggling in the landing phase. Maybe that's something Unicorns of Love can come back from, but they can't handle over-aggression as well. You don't have to hit a tower here. You are Rakan. You deal like 20 damage to it. He wanted the fight, man. He was probably looking for a potential tower uh, dive. And, and to be fair, the hook Exile is insane. was definitely set up to use Samix to body block for him, but Samix used the Feather Storm, so. That's why we talk about the kill onto Hillisang more than, of course, the one onto Exile, because it is hard when there are multiple guys around and the hook flies out, and then suddenly one guy dodges and then you get, you get hit. It's kind of hard to blame you for that. But the fact that this could even happen in the first place with Hillisang dying, that's the problem for Unicorns of Love. And once again, if you keep looking at the minimap, Unicorns can barely see anything. Like, they have so little control of the actual map, which means whenever they do step forward to hit something, they don't know how many members from Misfits are around. They don't know how close they are. They don't know who's going to show up first. And that just means it's very easy for Misfits to catch Unicorns. They will find Alfari with this ward here. It's good at least. Alfari oh, just walks away. Recombo is going to connect on the back half, but Alfari with the input buffer will make it out with the flag and drag. And... We saw that vision moments ago. Unicorns of Love, already a team that kind of struggles to play around missing members. You know, incredibly good when they have all five members on the map. They know where they need to be, but the lack of warding is just going to be brutal for this team to play against. For now, though, they seem content to continue to be aggressive on the top side. Vizichachi may be hoping to bait something in from Alfari. He has Hillisang there to back him up, but the rest of the Misfits are just pressuring in the mid lane. Syndra content to move on to the bottom side. So we see Misfits with that 2k goal lead and double Ocean Drake. Fantastic for the mid game. 
heard Udamna talk about this as well, how the Java and Syndra combo, once you are sitting in that mid game, about two items we're looking at. The burst damage is crazy. The ways you can start fights with the Jarvan to then set up that combo from Power of Evil is, is fantastic and very easy to execute for Misfits, so they should be able to keep forcing plays. Right now, they're trying to wave clear mid. This is where Maxlaw will bring value as a Graves. Can offer, of course, wave clear as one of the few junglers. We see Power of Evil move up. And they really want to get this tower here, but Ignar, he's looking for more. Hook goes in. Dodged out by the Featherstorm, but burned early from Samix. That's the flag and drag forward. Gonna look to target Hillisang. Just gonna use the Battle Dance to Ooh, walk away. Why did Alfari not all onto Samix right there? We had ulti gone from Zaya. We had Flash gone as well from him. And yet, he decided to jump onto Rakan. Probably was a misclick, actually, from Alfari. Oh, he just panicked in the moment. Flashed out to safety, I believe. Hold on. Exile backing in the pit is going to be hit. Vizichachi, meanwhile, will take down the top tower. Ignar peeking furiously onto Power of Evil. And now the pressure in the mid lane from Misfits may be too much for the Unicorns. Well, this tower will stay alive for now. But that was one of those moments in the mid game we just talked about with the Jarvan engaging in, setting up everything for Power of Evil. And then, boom, big team fight for Misfits. Sadly, Alfari picked the wrong target with that ulti. Still gonna stand by the fact it was a misclick from him. And he never intended to hit a Hillisang, but Unicorns right now, they're then saying, okay, you just missed the ulti, you use your teleport. This mid lane tower is low, and Unicorns, they really wanna take it down. And you have to be careful here, because there's a, still a lot of burst damage from Exile. Yes, he cannot 1v1 a Cinder at this stage of the game, but can hurt the more vulnerable members like the Varus on the side of Misfits. Hillisang gonna go back, Exile, trying to pick up what extra farm he can. Or in this case, just running down to bottom lane. But Graves is on the way, Syndra there as well. That's a lot of damage if the Corky wants to fight. And if you are Unicorns of Love, you don't actually need to fight right now. You need to just let Visichachi win his side lane. He's so strong on Fiora, who's only getting stronger. Exile needs to just get away here. He's doing that very well. And this tower will go down, and you just have to sacrifice it. There's nothing you can do to defend it. The best maybe you can do is try and trade it for the mid tower that's already low, and then let Chachi go for that top lane tower. Third Ocean Drake coming up. Misfits are poised to take it if they get the opportunity. Trying to punish Hillisang. He's just going to battle dance out. Rather, grand entrance out. Yeah, this is a good play from Unicorns of Love. Look how they're not overextending bot lane. They're not overextending mid lane. They're waiting for Visit Chachi to make the play. They know that bot lane tower will die. No one can stop Chachi because there's no teleport on the side of Alfari. And he knows that he can't really win the 1v1. And now Visit Chachi getting a free tower here. So nice play from Unicorns of Love actually staying passive in mid and bot lane. Triple Ocean gonna be tough to play against, but happy to have the additional gold to catch the team back up for things to be just about dead even. Really, the Drake's the only difference between these two lineups at this point in the game. The vast majority of the Misfits gold in the hands of Power of Evil, 201, or 210 CS, 301. This man definitely on a tear, but Unicorns of Love now looking to grab a mid lane tower as well. Yeah, look how Misfits are just getting dragged around the map. They all walked into topside. Alfari had to kill the wave. Power View wants his blue buff. Well, then suddenly mid lane tower is open now. Unicorns of Love by playing with patience. They're actually now getting the objectives. They're getting the gold. They didn't have to fight anyone for this. They got a top lane tower and a mid lane tower without killing a single member on the side of Misfits. And Misfits. All the advantage that Ocean Drake might bring, all the healing, only matters if you're going to continue to fight the opposition. Run! Wait, okay. He can go underground too? That seems ridiculous. Oh, when you kill him, yeah. I thought he just went under the water. I thought that was like the whole, the whole point. I guess. He's like a, a land shark. Don't question this game. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have weird things in League of Legends. Definitely do. But not a whole lot to say after that without going down uh, infinite rabbit hole. Yeah, you can just honestly pick any champion and you will find something strange. You mean Birdman who leaps in and charms people with his I don't know, dashing good looks? Is that how it works? I think that's very normal. <laughs> Is that the Deficio strategy? Oh, we have these in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> well, Unicorns of Love. Have the fan base, have the good looks in the hands of Hillisang. Maybe they can find it and engage as well. Don't have the control wards. Mm. Let's judge Hillisang. But they have and the good no, looks. Let's judge Samex once he goes back to base. Will he get a control ward? That Where's is the shield? question. <gasps> he did it! There we go. You know, he's getting more and more now. He's uh, pimping up the stats a little bit. Obviously feels bad, man, that your jungler at 22 minutes keeps his uh, refillable potion. Very important with that extra HP coming in. Shame. But well, hey, small things, small things. Very true. Unicorns of Love still haven't set up a lot of that vision. What little they have is around the Baron Pit, knowing that that is the next major objective. Looks like they want to lay down a little bit more as well. 
But sadly, none of the members on the area, except for Samix, have any vision to show for it. Flash Ooh. away from the hook. Big respect move from Xerxes. Don't think that one was going to connect, but well, not first step, the ignore. First step here for Unicorns is always pushing mid and just make sure that once the mid lane gets pushed in, that you're first of all not getting caught like randomly because there's no vision on, let's say, an, an Ignora and Sama, and then communicate. If four members for Misfits are sitting mid, good, tell Chachi to just push bot lane. If you suddenly see only two members or three members for Misfits near mid lane, you gotta call for Chachi to back away because then he might get ganked in that bottom lane. And right now, Unicorns are not in a position to run in. So look here, Power Vivo on the minimap has gone missing. This is where Unicorns communicate to Chachi. Step back, step back, we do not see everyone on the map. Chachi didn't get the message, or no one told him to back away, and now Power Vivo is probably gonna kill him. Has to walk away. What's he gonna parry? A lot of damage goes down there. Visit Chachi, not really any options to escape. Tries to get a kill back. But okay. Now Hill is saying is moving in the mid lane. Uh, but he gets out. He did get out. I don't know if he was trying to just stop the rest of Misfits from walking down, but right now you have 30 seconds on Visit Chachi. Hill is saying he's still gonna get caught and die. He might try and execute at the tower. All right, Hill saying the slow walk away. Ignar running. Mobis, can he die? Execute. Yes. Execute in the end. I don't want to say well played, but good on him to get the execute. And a little unfortunate that he was caught overextending so much. Power of Evil does have to burn Flash. That is pretty crucial in the fights to come. Still has the cleanse, but as the strongest member of the Misfits lineup currently, crucial for Unicorns of Love to shut him down. And we did though see that Power of Evil went bot lane, got that kill on Mr. Chachi, even though Unicorns of Love actually had members in the mid lane to try and see if Misfits were missing, so that Resulted in a fairly easy kill for the guys of, on Misfits Gaming. They will now walk towards Baron. Everyone is alive from a Unicorn to but Hillsang is far away. But this simply means that Unicorns before, when they tried to set up some vision control here, it just gets killed instantly because you, you lose pressure at Baron. And now it's actually being started by Misfits. No vision from Unicorns. They don't realize this is happening. They're just pushing mid lane. Graves, Varus, Syndra, they're going to kill that one pretty quickly. Unicorns to love slowly moving up, but Ignar just waiting in the brush. 2k dropping. That's a free Baron. Over. Free Baron for Misfits. Unicorns of Love not in a great position to start this fight. Keep in mind, Visit Chachi has no tanky stats whatsoever. Does a lot of damage. Leap forward, Visit Chachi trying to find something. Bit of a slow on to Xerxes. Misfits walk away unscathed. That's pretty bad for the Unicorns of Love. Yeah, if you're 24 minutes into the game without killing anyone right there, I can just go in and take a Baron, then something is wrong. Unicorns of Love had lost all vision around the Baron specifically. Of course, Hillisang had died early and was on the way back from base, but no one checked instantly. All the blue trinkets, I think, were on cooldown during that time, and Misfits, without even having, like, an insane Baron team, made a great call, and they get the Baron for it. Now, though, Misfits, it's just going to be so easy for them to push in. There is such limited wave clear on the side. That's the hook over the wall. There's a Chachi with the parry just in case the flay comes through as well. Unicorns of Love gonna have to give up a lot of towers here without really contesting. They can't afford to approach that cannon creep. Yeah, mid lane will fall, bot lane. We have Jarvan pushing in at the moment. Three members from Unicorns are looking to try and kill Alfari. He just walks away though for now. That means now suddenly Exile, he's out of position. In the mid wave, Exile. There's a Chachi on the way in. Han Sama gets some free hits down, but that's the engage from Hillisang. They're trying to move forward. That is going to be the ultimate coming in from Jarvan. The Cataclysm could be huge, but then the Feather Collar pulling things back. Blade Collar not going to be enough. The parry comes in. Visit Chachi, can you save the day? Blast Cone accidentally autoed from Max Lord. Not going to get the chance to reload the shutdown. The double kill. Unicorns of Love striking back. Oh, Exile, he wants Ignar as well. No flashy on the Thresh. Just got to walk it down now. Visit Chachi on the hunt as well. No hope. He's been here before. Ignar, no chance to outplay that one. Misfit did not expect that engage because Exile was not there. He was walking from the bot lane, so they thought they had some time to hit the tower. Hillisag pulling up the massive engage right there. Fat wave on the top side, double Trinity Force Deficio. This may just be a broken inhibitor. Unicorns of Love just crush misfits in that fight. Now they're getting everything on the back of it. And we have seen this so many times before in Europe where the other team with the advantage, they're getting everything. And when you think, okay, it's over, it's done for the Unicorns of Love, they find an engage like this. Look, it's 3v5. Misfits do not expect it. It's straight on to Ansama, so he goes down so quickly. Now Exile joins. Now Visichachi joins. They literally engaged without their carries around, except for Desire. And Misfits just get so surprised that the carries get caught out due to the great engage. And when you look back at that fight, I mean, we can see Ignar get run down here. Visit Chachi almost full health. 
Now, admittedly, a lot of that is from Lifesteal. Exile, full health. Samix, full health. All the damage goes on to Hillisang and Xerxes. You can see PoE, yes, did a ton of damage. Almost 3k there. That is massive, but it's the strongest member of your team. When none of the enemy carries are dead, clearly the fight has gone wrong. And the Corky, you talked about the scaling aspect of that pick. 4k damage for Exile. Now we got to see if Misfits can continue winning fights because they just lost a big one. Slight gold advantage for Unicorns. First Drake for them as well. It will be a Cloud Drake, so not too valuable at this point here. Also got to highlight the three Ocean Drakes are four misses. While it's great region outside of some of these fights here, they're not the Drakes that you're really going to win the game with. Like, that's again why we're looking at Infernal and Mountain to be the massive ones, especially Infernal. So right now, Misfits might feel a little bit sad that they didn't have more luck with the Drakes. And out of combat region, maybe if they win a fight, it makes it easy to go take a Baron, but Unicorns of Love, they don't, they don't fight and they give you a chance to regen. This team's all about going in. Once you disable that regen, not something to be concerned with. Misfits can still defend this tower pretty easily, however. Now Fari may be on the way down to try to start a fight. Vizichachi has the TP, but is not nearby. And I think if Chachi, once he completes the death, death stance here, if he gets a GA as well, it's going to be almost impossible to deal with in this game here for Misfits. They can't stop him in a side lane. They can't really kill him fast enough in a team fight. And of course, Exile with the damage as well, with Samax backing him up. Max are already struggling in those small engages too. And that is just one terrifying Fiora. 4-2-2, Trinity Force. Ravenous Hydra, Death Stance. No Black Cleaver, no Randwins, no some tanky items on that side lane. All about the split push and still coming in clutch in these team fights. Yeah. Just one big fight for Unicorns of Love to get right back in the game. And it's looking difficult suddenly for Misfits. By no means over, but you really need your AD carry right now to get some items, because sitting just on a blade and a static shift is not great for Avaros at 30 minutes. His damage is fairly mediocre. Oh, Cloak of Agility. That's fair. A little bit of extra crit with your Blade of the Rune King. Not now exactly what you want. Sword. Yeah, this is definitely a bit grim. And obviously, I didn't say the Blade Room King is bringing the crit. I'm just saying it's not an infinity that you're sitting with. So you have crit with the blade, not great. Two of three pieces. Two of three pieces. Getting closer. Baron two minutes out will be the next big catalyst for a fight. Next Drake is going to be the Cloud. So no Elder Dragon to fight over yet. But the Baron pick could be where this game is decided. However, Unicorns have to be careful to take the fight. They do get a nice little engage there. Ulti gone now from Hillisang. If a follow-up fight happens, should be ready fairly soon, though. Meanwhile, bot lane, Chachi is currently split pushing, trying to bully out this Javania. At this point, I mean, he might almost threaten to just kill Afari straight away. He's yep, behind you he's right now. For it. Flag, drag, leap forward, moving, looking for a little bit more. Oh, he's going to power of evil. He just shut him down. The thing here is, Chachi's doing this before Baron even spawns. So right now, he's going to respawn and be out in time. There's actually no objective on the map that Misfits can take quickly. They have to then look at some of these turrets, which are, of course, very far away. So 40 seconds left on Mr. Charge's death timers here. He should make it back in time for the Baron fight, making it less risky to go for that all in. Minute and counting down. Of course, just a bit of an unfortunate timing on the repast, using it right as the Syndra comes in. And we mentioned earlier, without a death stance, he has no resistance items, a little bit of health in the fade from the Trinity. Oh, Exile is playing greedy right now, going for that wave. He does have the package to try and get out, but Ignar is looking for him. Moby Boots is just going to walk away, but the package being down will give them the edge in the coming Baron fight. 36 seconds, vision control in favor of Misfits. And Misfits actually, they should have used the time right here to just recall. They should have gone back to base, stocked up, uh, stocked up on control wards, walked right back out and just set up Baron. Just literally five control wards around this Baron here, make it impossible for Unicorns to walk in and get vision. But instead, they were chasing a kill on Exile. They had to recall now after Chachi basically respawned. And that's why Misfits actually didn't really get any control on the map despite killing a member in the late game. Because now they're kind of paying the price for that. Five control wars in the inventory of UOL also means that they can take the vision back in their favor. Now nobody has any vision in the pit. Misfits, they've got control of the Unicorns of Love jungle when it comes to vision, but the pit may be the more important part at this stage of the game. Misfits still moving forward, still playing aggressive, not too scared without Vizichachi around. Know that they have the main advantage, but that Jarvan's going to have to answer eventually. Now comes the push and the pull. Who is going to go for the play first? Hillisang is now going to be in trouble. He's going to get deleted. 
Misfits may just be able to move to the Baron now that they have the man advantage. I think that was a long range stun from Power of Evil into then the flash hook from Ignar that caught out Hillisang. Baron will be started instantly. They want to try and force Visichachi to, to choose between going for bottle and inhib or TPing into a fight. He's going for the fight. TPing in, Xerxes, can he get the steal? Maxlor got it last game. Is it Xerxes' turn now? Samick's taking a lot of poke. Power of Evil does so much damage. Engage coming in. Alfari throws down the alt, immediately gets interrupted. Xerxes already used the cast for the disengage. Visichachi not able to break open anything more than a single tower. Misfits, what are they going to be able to get from this one? Well, they're still chasing Power of Evil. Feather Storm, pull back, rooted. Power of Evil going to have to cleanse and walk away. Yeah, very good poke damage from Unicorns and nice disengage as well. They know they just want to stop the Baron, but this is where the Ocean Drakes oh. can kick in. Visichachi hungry for a little bit of blood. Parry is going to come out and block some of the damage from the Unleashed Power. Look at the HP coming in here for Misfits with the Ocean Drakes, trying to stay healthy. Not really enough, though, for them right now. Uh, Exile is out of mana, so right now Unicorns of Love probably not in a good spot to actually fight. And Power of Evil very quickly regenerating right now. Not yeah, in a great he, spot, but from 30% health to almost 70. He's going to be fine if he just waits a few more seconds. Oh, Chachi. Both teams waiting. Visit Chachi now suddenly on the backside. Power of Evil has to be careful. Exile moving forward. That's the engage coming forward. Visit Chachi's on the back. He's looking to hit up on Alfari. The recombo going to be denied. Suddenly multiple members are locked up by the bar assault. Hansama is going off. But Visit Chachi has gotten one back. Oh, he gets it. And heal up. That's the double coming in for Exile. Just enough mana to get down the kills, and that's advantage to the Unicorns of Love. Great engage from this Gragas here. That was a big change for Unicorns compared to last game. They took early Gragas for Xerxes. He finds a good engage. Rest of Unicorns can follow up. They are still fairly low. Ignar's Ignar. gonna check. Engage goes in. Ignar now going to go down. Exile so low. Damage goes in. That's the jungler dead. That means no Baron for the Unicorns of Love. Max Lord Power people, but they've got a ton of damage. But can they find the kills? Hillisang. Running for his life, Scatter of the Week is going to connect. Samax Ulti is ready. He's looking for a potential fight. He's not going to get it. Exile needs to step away. So no Baron for Unicorns of Love with Xerxes dying and still two carries alive on the side of Misfit. Let's see the fight again. So they're looking for Chachi first. And then Xerxes sees Hansamo slightly out of position, goes for the engage onto him straight away. And at first it actually looks fine for Misfits because they get a kill on Mr. Chachi. But of course they lose Jarvan at the same time. And now Samax left untouched the entire fight. He's still feeling like he can actually go aggressive. Exile getting that one kill onto Hansama who got engaged on earlier. And Unicorns will win the fight at first, but then of course lost Xerxes after. And I thought for sure the four-man Var Assault would be enough to win that fight, but there just was not the follow-up damage. Samex untouched means that it's pretty easy for them to round out that fight. Now, luckily, Infinity Edge finally coming in for Han Sama, but already almost a fourth item for Samex, and he has so much crit. Big uh, thing to highlight is the fact that no TP available for Visit Chachi, so he can't really go to the bottom lane and start split pushing. He needs to stay with the team. He's taking a lot of damage. Visit Chachi in trouble, gonna dash, trying to make it to safety. Graves all comes in. Out comes the Jarvan alt as well, but they're gonna save him. Alfari may have overextended. Visit Chachi is out of the fight. Corky's on the backside. Power people in trouble. A little bit of vengeance for that laning phase, but now the shutdown on Exile. Oh, and they keep trading this one for one. This game is so close. Alfari, he wanted that kill on Visit Chachi so badly, but Fiora can just get out of the ulti from the Javan very easily. Package being uh, used by Exile there to get that one kill. And we kind of reset again. Chachi can go bot lane, get his wave, wait for that TP to be ready. And remember at this point, you can't just all start recalling because then you might lose Baron straight away. And Ignar, he knows. And it's such a close game. And I have another stat for you, Deficio. It better be good now. Fiora is 8-0 this split. This is the ninth game. And that is the stat. That is the stat. That's it. Trevor's practiced delivering those so much more than I have. But yeah, Fiora's 8-0. This could be the first loss or the first win. I wish I was more comfortable calling it either way, but honestly, it's just such a close game. Look here. Misfits are very far away from Baron at this point. Maxwell's doing a red buff. I don't think Unicorn's new. Actually, they, do, they, they have, have a award. Yeah. award. They had a award just around the corner. Could have maybe seen it. And gotta say, Unicorns of Love. You Not buying as many control wards as Misfits, but definitely buying enough that they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe when it comes to vision control. But you gotta keep that door and shield. It might uh, keep you alive in a potential fight. Samax, he agrees. Look, Everyone now recalling inside of Unicorns. When Samax walks away with six health, Yep. we will know that Doran's saved the day. Until then, maybe a control ward, but... Play from before, we see here where Chachi is staying with the team. There's no teleport. Takes all the damage in the world. Good riposto. And then Afari 
It's a little bit too greedy for the for the kill onto this uh, Fiora here. Ends up then jumping in, and Power Vival actually did not see Exile come from the side. So he took so much damage from him. Obviously, when you do package into the enemy team in the late game, you probably <laughs> will trade one for one, uh, and that's exactly what happened here. Not a bad trade in the end, though, given how strong Power Vival is. But good news for Unicorn's Love is Exile starting to catch up, approaching that four-item threshold. Exile continues to poke. Stun actually not going to connect. Hillsang looking for the engage suddenly. Oh, in the middle of the team is a Chachi hungry for a little bit of blood. They're running forward. Maxwell has to run for his life. The cast not quite enough, but suddenly they're trapped in the middle of the pit. Alfari may have made his own grave, but no one has dropped on the side of Unicorns of Love. Oh. Fade away rocket not enough. Alfari. Perry not going to connect. Golden Egg is trying to buy a little bit of time. But once again, it's Unicorns finding Hansama first. Alfari is still alive. Fight in the mid lane. Ignar now coming back. Samix is going to use the ultimate to try to make it out of this one. Maxor dishing out what damage he can. Power of Evil, where are you? Your team needs you. Cannot fire back. Exile throwing out the damage. Jarvan still running for his life. The exhaust down to the Power of Evil. The cleanse back. Power going for a little oh, bit gets more. He gets the kill onto Exile. Alfari is still alive. He's still alive. Their HP from the Drakes here. He's, he's almost 50 percent. But Unicorns, they're going for Baron right now. Power Viva, he's on the way to stop it. Chachi, he wants another fight. And he has the TP, and there's a wave there as well. Samix now considering to back. Unicorns of Love, are they going to go for the Baron? Samix backing out. Unicorns of Love decide no. Visit Chachi pushing alone. But Misfits have been baited in. They think the Baron is being started, and now they have left him unattended. But Han Sama is here. Parry comes out. Ultimate follows. Well played by the team. Visit Chachi doesn't have the tanky stats. But Dragos, why is Chachi still pushing? His entire team just recalled. Blood in the eyes, Deficio. He sees what he wants, and he goes for it, but it is not the right decision. Misfits now a priority over the Baron pit. Yeah, they can start it. Exile dead for another 10 seconds. Everyone is alive on the side of Misfits. Alfari with teleport. They need a ward behind the wall here to spot Xerxes. They see him with the blue trinket. They see him. They know he's around. Ignar may be able to stop the steal. Maxwell feeling pretty confident after he got the Baron in game one. They're going to keep knocking this one down. Alfari is in trouble. Samix and Hillisang trying to burn him down. Cersei, it's all about the steal. He's just going to walk away. That's going to be Baron for Misfits, all on the back of a single mistake from Vizichachi. We have seen some very good engages in this game here. We have seen some very greedy plays as well from both teams. Multiple times, good engages from Unicorns onto Ansama. He's been going down very quickly. But then when you see a play like that, this late in the game, when Visit Chachi just thinks that he needs to be the hero and he needs to go for that play, oh. <laughs> Didn't get it. For the record, what was supposed to happen, he was supposed to steal it and then alt, and the alt would push him back over the wall. And instead, he leapt over the wall, didn't steal it, alted, was stuck there. But Hill is saying Samix chose not to go in. So luckily, uh, Maxor keeps his life in the exchange. See what else Misfits can get with this Baron here. They really want to get one or two in hips with the Baron buff. 40 minutes in, still so close in terms of gold, kills, team fights, everything. There is no clear favorite right now. Despite Unicorns of Love with great scaling, we have now seen Misfits actually find a few kills and then use that to get the Baron. And this is the vulnerability of Vizachachi on this Fiora. Full AD, pseudo defensive items in the death stance, a nice defensive item in Sterics, but mostly the aggressive focus now as the QSS in addition to the Riposte. I love this play from Unicorn, so they know, okay, listen, our comp is strong. It is really, really good this late in the game. Don't just let Misfits start sieging. They're actually just moving down with the package from Exile. They're looking to be aggressive and land some damage here. Remember, Fiora, four items now, almost four fully completed items on Exile, he has two. Basically halves right there, combining for one. And Alfari on the top side, but no TP to join the team. He's going to need a full eight seconds before he can make it back to base. Exiles on the way. Cannot see if he used the package to speed that up or if he still has it. Looks like he did. Backing off. Neither team going for anything aggressive. Deficio, there's a Baron, but I don't feel like anyone has an advantage, except for Vizichachi right now, who is going for the one for one. Now trying to get over the wall, leaping forward. He's so angry! Or visit Chachi! This man is possessed! Alfari, I don't know if you can kill him. He has so much lifesteal, but the healing reduction coming in could be crucial. Visit Chachi in trouble. The minions are going to finish it. They killed Power of Evil as well. He just got caught in the jungle. Unicorns of Love, they're pushing for that tower now. What's even happening in this game? Like, this is crazy. How did Power of Evil just die? <laughs> We're going to have to find out, but right now, the tower siege more important, more pressing. Xerxes going to get pulled back to the team. Starting the engage, Gargoyle Stoneplate has been used. Hansama the only source of damage, and they're trying to move forward. Stoneplate used by Alfari. The disengage comes out. The hook goes wide. Excel is on his way. He was top lane to kill that wave. He's moved all the way down now to try and join his team. There's a top lane in him that's open. 
They won the tower, though. Hook connects. Not the man you want to hook up, though. Now the knockup comes in as well. The follow-up, Ignar potentially in trouble. Keep your eyes on Hansama. He is going to get knocked back into the team and gone! Unicorns of Love ready to break up in the base. They've got their eyes set on Ignar and Alfari. They are going to be next to fall. Alfari making it out. By the skin of his teeth, the Unicorns of Love now poised to break the base. They may be able to end here. Let's see, Max Law, Power of Evil just respawned. TP available for Visit Chachi. They have minions as well. Double cannons, but they're trying to kill him. All about the wave clear, but the TP coming in is going to keep them healthy. Hillisang tries to leap forward, but he will get deleted immediately. Max Law, Alfari, power. Can you hold the base? Alfari in trouble. Visit Chachi going wild. The tower has dropped. Unicorns of Love pulling back, and for a brief moment, Misfits hold on, but it looks like it may stand against them. Oh, let's see. They're trying to get that second inhib at least just to get something. They actually might look for more. Power of looking for a little bit of disengage. Visit Chachi getting lower and lower. Has the lifesteal if he can find the fight or the creeps to hit. UOL now backing off. Two inhibitors in their favor. Oh, Massive seven. start. Featherstorm comes out. Blade Caller pulls back, trying to disengage from the Jarvan. But they have to respect Visit Chachi. Cannot forget that he is a part of that fight. That is a massive advantage to Unicorns of Love, and we're going to have to look back and figure out what went wrong. Why did Power of Evil go down? That is the catalyst that started this play on top of the insanely aggressive moves from Visit Josh. Yeah, because right now they're trading one for one, but Power of Evil just walks straight down the jungle alone, not knowing where Unicorns would be, and he just dies instantly. Good punish here from the Unicorns, and actually gave them two inhibs. They got one Nexus turret as well. Massive advantage for them in the late game, but we might have to wait for an Elder Drake to spawn, because right now Misfits are looking to just defend the base for as long as possible, and Unicorns, despite having only two Drakes, getting that Elder Drake will give them a big enough buff, combined with the strong late game, to then finish the game itself. You got full items now on Samax, almost full items on Exile, like their composition is so good here in the late game with double lady carry, and a Fiora, who is definitely on the warpath in this game here. Mr. Chachi <laughs> is crazy. But it's working. It's working sometimes. It but also did He backfire. gave up a Baron, but he also started a play that gave them two inhibitors. That's true. That I think is true. Probably worth in the end. Everyone very aware of the healing that he has. Moral reminder coming out for the Graves as well as the Varus. They do not want to deal with the sustain opportunities. Oh, yeah, Misfits right now, they're still sitting top lane uh, trying to punish Visichachi, and uh, that means this bottom lane tower is actually not defended. Power of Evil versus the world. Small group wave to back them up. No TP to make the minion invulnerable. They're here now. And now Misfits is ready. Long range wave clear. Exile going to try to throw out what poke he can. Leap forward from Maxlor. Let's look at uh, wards from Misfits they can use to TP on. There is only one ward placed just across the wall here by Ignor. There's like two of them. And Deficio, this is the worst part is that. Look at that Fiora on the top side. Yeah, you if can't. you leave for 10 seconds, she can break that other Nexus tower. Take your Nexus as well. So you are in a very tough spot as Misfits. Xerxe wants to get that tower down. Trying to get it down. Lower Ooh, and lower. Hook goes over the wall. He's going to connect on the Samix, but a beautiful QSS gets him out. Hansama's ulti just missed onto Xerxe that he body slammed away from it. That is huge for Unicorns of Love. They've got big waves coming in mid and top lane. They want this last tower. Visit Chachi. Now the focus for Misfits as they try to break the wave. Power of Evil going to do what he can to clear this one out, but has to respect the engage potential. Hillisang may look to get a little bit more. Xerxe hooked up for now, but Exile going to use the empowered auto. The extra range from the Rapid Fire Cannon to clear that one out. Visit Chachi looking for the 2v1. He may just get it. Leaps in on a Maxler. QSS out and is going to walk away. Unicorns of Love. They're looking to take the fight. They leap forward. Exile goes in. He's going off. He's looking for a little bit more. The double knockout from Alfari is not going to be enough because Exile is unconcerned. He has the damage. They've got the fight and Unicorns of Love are moving in and they are taking down the Misfits. That's going to be game two. And this was... Basically a standard Unicorns of Love game where this is why people love them. Towards, yeah, Look, exactly. I, you, like, can, you can call it messy all you want, Deficio, but at the end of the day, that was hype. Ex exactly, but like you always end up with a massive question mark on your face because I feel like each team had won and lost the game like 10 times each during these like, what, 46 minutes we just watched this game from giving up kills into Barons to then, okay, you should now be winning the game, and then a 3v5 engage much earlier in the game at that inhib turret where Hillisang just goes in, surprises Misfits, Misfits lose the fight, and then suddenly the game is in favor of Unicorns, and then it was in favor of Misfits, and then Unicorns, and then Misfits. 
And in the end, Unicorns of Love actually did manage to then <laughs> close it out. Replay. Unicorns of Love, the Misfits, and the Unicorns. If you ever want to know what happens when a man goes insane, you got a camera. Camera right I here. Mean, camera on the event. It's just really hard to kind of break down in, you know, oh, no, one minute's was... time what just happened in 46 <laughs> minutes live. This was not a game for color casters, but let's hope it's a game for analysts because Unicorns of Love have fought their way back to tie the tier series. Tieries. <laughs> tieries. Shocks, please take it. Take it away. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so I just want to pick back up where we left off when we were in the pause. Let me <laughs> summarize two things. One, since Jachi's on Fiora and he might take over the game. And two, nah, it doesn't make that much of a difference that he picked Graves in the end, but you guys change your <laughs> tune because you were saying very is how another pick, but the Graves would have had such a big impact in kind of the rest of the game. Can you explain? I think uh, the, the focus is the difference between Gragas and Graves. Yeah. Right? Like Graves has strength, which is like he has decent damage, he scales relatively well, fine. He can but stop then, smoking. And yeah, he <laughs> can do that too, right? Like one of his big problems though is like he doesn't provide the same level of utility that Gragas does. And something that we saw time and time again was every time a fight started, like Hansom was just kind of getting blown up. He was getting knocked around, thrown into all the carries. Zaya was fine on the back line. Corky, fine on the back line. Like all these damage dealers for the Unicorns of Love, and a lot of these fights were fine when there was always a threat onto champions like the Syndra and the Varus. And a lot of that threat, we gotta be honest again, came from Visit Chachi and Oduwamni. We were talking a lot about the phenomenon that is Chachi. He said himself, if he has a chance to take an enemy down, but he's gonna die in the process, he is always going to take that. So in the end, do you think he endangered this game more than he won it? Or did he win it for the Unicorns of Love? Um. I, I can't even say that he was the reason be, of you all winning this game. Sure, his sideline play towards the end got really, really good. But I, I feel like more was on Corky and on Zaya and the way they fought. It was just really good from them because Fiora was, was, was good here in fights. She was cleaning up some fights and she was a big threat. Pretty much Syndra always had to use the ultimate on, uh, on Fiora. But I think it was more of a team effort than just a few rapid. I can agree. Obviously, Samux on Zaya did a great job. Exile found his targets when it mattered most. Let's take a look at the turnaround fight when Misfits have an advantage, but they push a bit too far onto this inner turret. And there it goes. Hillasang always jumps in. Yeah, one of the things that Odo was highlighting as the play was happening was just like the positioning of the AD carry, right? Because uh, something you really wanted to emphasize was of all the people to hit the tower, the Han Summer shouldn't have been one. Yeah, for sure, because they just got Nasher, all they have to do is play it slow and just let the minion waves do their job here. They didn't even push the top lane, the top lane is just pushing towards them. Usually when you get Nasher, you just want to set up some sideways so you can have time to rotate to them after your main uh, threat is gone. For example, in this case, the mid lane. The mid lane wave was gone, so they could have maybe rotated to the bot lane or to the top lane and tried to set up a play there, but it just they just had poor side lane management in this game. Yeah, it seems like they kind of lost the plot, the Misfits, when they had to close it out. This was the longest game the Unicorns of Love has played all split, and you know when it gets to that split second decision making, they're usually very good in the team fights. But for the side of Misfits, um, I don't want to be too harsh on them in terms of, wow, this was horrible laking decision making, Vedius, because it seems like this was just a very, very tough game to close out on either side. I mean, that's very true, but at the same time, like, it kind of was awful okay. to on side of Misfits because, like, just backtracking to their series versus H2K, think of the leads that they too had accrued versus Oro's team. Like, they were in a prime position to be able to end that game, and then they made one bad decision, one bad fight. Oh no, the game's suddenly wide open, and you give loads of windows for the enemy team to come back. And one of the things that Max Lord joining the team was supposed to rectify was their shot calling, was that leadership, their understanding of how to play the mid late game because this was something they struggled with last split. But so far, six weeks into the split, we're still seeing these same issues yeah. where Misfits get to a point where they should, in theory, be able to cleanly close out the game, but they just don't properly set up in order to do so. Yeah, I guess my point was more that after that fight, like it was more of an even setting and a very fed um, Fiora that was constantly pushing was, in the waves yeah. on the other team. So it was a more difficult scenario and it was a more forgivable throw. Let's us maybe end on that note. So if, as we go into game three now, uh, Unicorns of Love had a bit of a better early game than we've seen from them at Rift Rivals. We know that they can close late. So do you think this will push them over the edge? Do you see them easily taking game three? Or do you see the Misfits coming back? And what do you want to see from them? I don't think it's going to be easy at all. I think game one, they it, it wasn't really convincing from you all, even though they lost, yeah. Misfits kind of just played way better than them. With their win conditions, they played a lot better. And in game two, they looked really not that great. The, the early game was better, sure, but 
I feel like Misfits overall, even though they lost this, the early game, they looked more solid than you all in, in that early game. So I think if Misfits can keep their heads cool and keep playing how they did in these first two games, I think they can still win because I think this game too was a throw from them. It wasn't that you all played better than well, them. Well, let's not forget also, uh, I almost forgot the fact that Power of Evil was incredibly fed, was almost solo killing all of their members, and then he traveled down to the bottom lane and got caught. That was probably the throw, sadly for Power of Evil, because he had been carrying most of that game and has been a great influential force for the Misfits. So, Vettis, do you agree? Will this be a game for Misfits to close it yes. out without much trouble. I think the Misfits have looked like the better team throughout the series, and I think that they should consider picking or banning Gragas. Like, I feel like it's too big of a pick right now in this series specifically to give it over to the Unicorns of Love, but the same side for you, well, they cannot afford to give it to the side of Misfits. It just has, it has too much value. So either take it off the game completely or you find new picks uh, to answer. It ain't over till the fat man sings. We'll see who picks them. We're just minutes away from the last battle in this series. You won't want to miss it. Touchy. Touchy. Holy, Holy touchy, man. Touchy. Oh! oh my god, outplayed! Scatter the weak can be used on the rift here. Hillsang trying to run to safety. Nope, that's the deletion, and now the fight is starting up. Oh, exile hooked up out of nowhere. Double kill for power of evil. The feather collar pulling things back. Blade collar not gonna be enough. The parry comes in. Visitachi, can you save the day? Blast cone accidentally honored from Max Lord. Not gonna get the chance. Suddenly multiple members are locked up by the bar assault. Han Sama is going off. But Visitachi has gotten one back. Oh, he gets a hand heal up. That's the double coming in for exile. He's so angry. Max Lord, Visitachi, this man is possessed. How far? I don't know if you can kill him. He has so much life steal, but the healing reduction coming in could be crucial. Visitachi in trouble. The minions are gonna finish it. How far he is not going to be enough because exile is unconcerned. He has the damage. They've got the fight, and Unicorns of Love are moving in, and they are taking down the Misfits. That's going to be game two.